Welcome back to tutorial number four. Um, this one I hope is going to be a pretty short one actually. It's, it's really just an add-on to the last one with all that, that leaf explosion. Um, I, the last one ran a little long and I didn't want to just try and do this all in one. So this one we're going to be talking about how to make the, the water splash that comes up from the stump and the water droplet. Um, it's pretty simple. So let's get started here. So I've kind of prepared just a um, simplified version of the scene just so we can work a little easier. So it's basically just the plane and the stump. Um, you don't even need that stuff. I, I turned the trees off. They're, they're in the background, but I just so I can have a little bit more viewport uh, maneuverability without having a bunch of clutter. <clears throat> um, so you're going to need Cinema 4D and you're going to need X particles for this. So it's pretty simple. So let's first make, well, let's first get this stupid little thing out of here. Get there. Okay, so let's make an XP system. You know what? Let me just do, delete these trees. They're just confusing me. I don't need them. Okay, so we've got our system here, and the system is just like this file structure that comes in basically empty except for the file that says emitters. It has an emitter, which is right here. I want this to be a circle and I want the emitter plane to be Y plus so that it fires my particles up into the air. Um, let's also make our frames per second 24 and then change our frame range to be about 120 frames long. So it's five seconds. It's usually what I start with and then I can adjust it later on. Okay, so that's cool. We've got our particle system doing that. Um, but I want it to be coming out of the stump. So I'm gonna kind of maneuver it down like right there, and let me get out of my camera here and just kind of position it where I want it. So I want it to be right about there, and then for the radius, I want it to be about 12. So it's pretty small, so just like that, right? <clears throat> now, I don't want it to constantly emit particles like that, because otherwise it's just going to be a fountain. That could be cool, but that's not really what I'm going for. I want one quick burst of just like a, like a water droplet hitting. So the way you do that is you go to the emission tab in your emitter and you change your emission from rate to shot. So what that does is it now just shoots out one defined burst at a time that you want. So right now it's going to shoot out a thousand particles on the first frame. So there they are. One little puck. So I want like 400 particles <clears throat> and I want them to shoot out at the 24th frame. So for my animation, you, you can change the shot time to whatever you want to be, but for the way I did it, I had a water droplet sort of animate down from the top of the screen, and then it took about a second, so 24 frames, and then right at 24 frames is when it impacts with the stump, and that's when I want my um, water droplet to, to happen. So I'm going to change my shot time to 24 seconds. So now when I hit play, nothing's going to happen, and then 24 frames, there. Cool. Okay, um, that's great. <clears throat> the other thing is I don't want any speed. So right now they're shooting out at 150 centimeters per second or frame or whatever that is. I'm going to change that to zero, and I want my radius to be 1.5. Okay, so now they're going to just be born, and they're just going to stay there. Cool. Okay, so the basis of this effect is in dynamics. If you go to the dynamics folder, uh, you can choose your dynamic, and the one you want is called XP Splash. So what this does, it's created, it's a thing specifically for creating what's called a crown splash, which is, which is what I had made. So a crown splash is like when you see a close-up of a raindrop hitting the water, and it gives that sort of unbroken sheet of water in like a little circle. Basically, it looks like a crown. That's a crowd splash. So I'm going to position this so that it's basically right over the top of this thing. In fact, I could probably just put it as a child of the emitter, hit PSR to, to line it up perfectly, and then let me just rotate this back 90 degrees like that. There. Okay, so now it's perfectly positioned over the top of this. Now it gives you this little guide. This basically shows you where the splash is going to go. So let's just see what happens when I hit play. Nothing. <laughs> okay. So I think it's because I need to adjust. Let me 
you be the top or in the bottom radius. So it gives you these little sliders here. You can kind of make it more narrow or less narrow. Right there. Okay. Ah, I want the start time to be 24 frames, and I want the duration to be one frame. So that way, right at 24 frames, right when my particles are born, it's going to shoot these up, hopefully. But there we go. Look at that. Done. <laughs> nope. Okay, so that's cool. So we've got it, we've got it working. <clears throat> it's doing what it's supposed to do. So now we can refine it a little bit. So you can you can use this top radius, you know, I'm gonna get the bottom radius maybe a little closer to my emitter. Um, you can make the height like that. You can change the the power of it, the strength. Um, you can give it more handles or less handles. And I'll show you what those are for in a sec. So let's say, let's say I have it like that. Cool. Um, the other thing I'm noticing is we don't have any gravity in the scene. So right now they're just going to shoot up infinitely. So let's put some gravity in there. And that's going to be under modifiers. And you go to motion modifiers and where are you? gravity. And just leave it at the default. It comes in automatically at default of earth gravity, which is negative 9.8 meters squared. Okay, so now it shoots it up and they fall down. So you see that for like one little second, bloop. It's because my gravity is overpowering the power of this thing. So I want this splash. I'm gonna need to increase the strength maybe. Let's try like, or the distance. Let's try the distance. Let's put that up to like 100. Let's see what that does. <laughs> Nothing, okay. 200. Pow. Okay, there we go. Put 500. Better. Okay. Okay. Um, cool. So the other thing we can do is we can adjust these little handles. See how they have the little uh, dots on them? You can kind of pull them up or pull them down to sort of shape your crown splash. So right now, they're all uniformly <clears throat> coming out in sort of this cone shape, but you can kind of make it a little bit more random and, and realistic. So this kind of adjusts the power of these things. And you also have these little handles in between them as well. They're actually at little Bezier curves, so you can grab these and kind of twirl them down and up and down to sort of shape your cone shape a little bit. So let's just kind of grab some and move them around see what that gives us. Let me grab this guy and put it way up. And let's, uh, I think you can actually pull them out too, like individually, so they're, so this one kind of comes out more. Let's put this one, let's take this one and put it in more. Something like that, I don't know. I just kind of fiddle around with stuff until something looks good. It's the story of my art career. Cool. See what that does. Better. See? Way more natural. Cool. Okay, so we're getting a, a splash. That's good. Now, that's not nearly enough particles. So if we were to mesh this right now, it would just look like a bunch of little water droplets, right? It's not going to look very cool. Um, so let's add in the XP sheeter. So the XP sheeter is this really great thing that basically fills in the holes for you. So instead of having to, so if I didn't use this, I could I could go into my emitter and I could change my shot count to like 4,000 and that might help. Let's see, it's a little better. You know, let's try like 40,000. Getting, getting better, okay. But this sheeter kind of allows you to, to fill in the gaps a little bit. So let's just turn this on, turn, turn our particles back to 400, see what that does right out of the default. Okay, so see, look at that. That's, that's looking a little better already, just using the default. Now it's slowing down and it's chugging. Um, the th basically, the things you want to play with here are the max hole size and the minimum hole size. Um, I can't exactly remember what which one does which? I think, I think this is like the max hole size is like how big the, of a hole it allows in the particles before it starts filling in. 
let's see, let's try it, let's put this down to 10 and see what happens. Um, okay, so 10 is less particles, I think, 5. Yeah, so the, the higher this number, let's do like 25 and see what that does. I think it'll, yeah, the higher the number, the, the more particles it's going to generate. So let's, let's put this to like 15, see what that does. Let's try, let's try upping the minimum hole size to like 7, see if that changes anything. I seem to do much, but anyway, I think I, I think I, all I changed really was just putting my max hole size to like 15. So that's cool. So that's looking a little better. Great. Now we might also want this to collide with our stump because right now it's just sort of passing through it. So let's on our stump object, let's right click, go to X particles tags, and put an XP collider on there. Let's just see if that changes anything. Hopefully it doesn't break my whole simulation. Great, better. So now they're going to collide. I don't think in my animation they even came that far down because I retimed it and I'll show you how to do that here in a sec. <clears throat> I think the other thing that I did was in the dynamics I also put in a XP fluid effects which is basically just a quick way to make things act like water because right now they're not they're not you know, they're, they're still just particles being shot up in a cone and then coming down because of gravity, but it's not really fluid-like. If I put this on, I think it changes, I think it makes it a little better. Yeah, it looks, makes the particles sort of stick together a little more. Although, my sheeter... I don't know what happened with my sheeter there. It kind of made everything look crappy. Let's see, let's try adjusting put this back to 25, see what that does. Better. Let's try 35. Better. See, look, it's, it's acting a lot more liquid-like, and kind of pooling in different areas. Feels like a, more of a liquid. So that's just with the default. You can go in, you can change things. Um, you, know, you can change the accuracy from fast to medium to high. It'll slow your computer down, but it'll make things behave a little bit more accurately. I'm not going for a super physically accurate simulation here. I just kind of wanted a cool looking splash. And there's a lot going on in my scene. There's leaves exploding up in the air. There's a sort of dynamic camera movement. There's trees, there's things to look at. So your eye isn't necessarily paying attention to how realistic this crown splash is. It just, it just needed to be kind of cool and stylistic and not necessarily physically accurate. So you can play around with this more. You can, right now, you know, maybe this one spike is a little too far out. I kind of want them to be a little, maybe a little more even. So I'll come back to my splash and maybe I think that's because this guy is super tall and maybe too far out. So let's bring him back in, something like that maybe. And power up on this one, see what that does. Let's see. A little better, maybe. Either way, doesn't matter too much. I'm just kind of showing you how I did, how this kind of works. You, you can play around with this to your heart's content to get a splash that you like. You know, maybe you want to increase the strength a little more. Maybe let's go for like 650. Um, ooh, yeah, it's a little stronger. And I wonder what happens if I increase the duration from one frame to two frames. So right now it's the power of this splash is starting on frame 24 and then ending on frame 25. It's only lasting for one frame, which is the same as our emitter. It starts on frame 24 and has a duration of one frame. But I wonder if I change this to like two frames. Let's see what that does. Will that like continue to, whoa, yeah, okay. <laughs> Wow, so let's put this to like 100. <clears throat> so it's kind of a, working with particles is sort of like a, a push and pull a little bit. It's a lot of just like guess and check. You change a number, see what happens. Change another number, see what happens. And sometimes you get weird effects that are undesirable. Sometimes you get surprising effects that are really cool. So that's way too big. Let's 
Let's go like 300. That's better. Okay, cool. So before we turn these particles into an actual mesh, uh, I want to retime this a little bit. So in my animation, <clears throat> the, the camera sort of comes down following a droplet and then it, it starts and goes really fast and goes wham and like impacts and then as soon as the splash happens everything sort of goes into slow motion. So the way that you can do that really easily in X particles, so I'll show you how to do that with the camera here in a, in a minute, but with X particles at least, in the emitter uh, under object there is this great retiming thing. So you can just retime stuff here. So right now everything's at 100% and I want it to remain at 100% until 24 frames. So I'm going to move this up to 24 frames, put a keyframe there, and then I'm going to go one, two frames over, and I'm going to put this down to like 2%. So that's going to do sort of like a bullet time matrix effect where everything just goes into slow motion. So bam, right? I think. Maybe it'll be easier to see if I turn off turn the duration back down to one. Let's see what that does. So it doesn't power it up quite so much. So that's going a lot slower. Yep, cool. So that's kind of what we want. We want it to be slow like that. Um, maybe the strength, let's do like 150. So again, retiming things sometimes changes your simulation a little bit. 200. Yeah, so it's a, it's a push and pull. Better. Cool. So let's say that I'm happy with that. Now that's probably coming out way too wide. It's, I'm not super happy with that actually, but it's, it's fine for this tutorial. I mean, I, I think it's just a lot of finessing these little things, changing numbers, um, you know, maybe changing the changing the strength, changing the top radius, uh, getting things in place. I don't want to spend too much time just like going through and changing a bunch of numbers. It's I just kind of wanted to show you the effects that I did, <clears throat> or the the little dynamics objects that I used, and then you can kind of play around with those numbers. Um, so let's say that we're happy with that. Great. So how do we turn this into water? Because right now it's just a bunch of little blue dots. Um, <clears throat> well, again, in the XP system, we can come to generators, and we want the OVDB mesher. <clears throat> so what this does is it takes particles and turns them into an actual polygon mesh. So if I take my OVDB mesher, it, says, it has this little field called sources, so my source would be my emitter. So if I put that in there, suddenly everything becomes these big clunky dots. <clears throat> um, now that's great, but it's way too chunky. So this is using voxels. So if you're, I don't know if you're, if you're familiar with using voxels or volume modeling, it's basically a volume modeler. That's all it is. Um, and you're just giving each particle a defined radius for how far away from the particle you should make a little circle of geometry. So that's the point radius here. And then you also have the voxel size. So if I can, if I decrease the point radius to like four, and, I, and if I could be wrong, but I don't think your point radius can be lower than your voxel size. Oh no, it's the other way around. Your voxel size can't be lower than your point radius. So if I make my voxel size three, Oh, I'm wrong. I guess I don't know anything. Whatever. Cool. So basically, th these are the two numbers you want to play with: our voxel size and point radius. So let's bring the point radius down to like maybe two, three, something like that, and then bring the voxel size down to two. So the you know if you get your voxel size too low, it starts to really define the shape of each little sphere, and it, it kind of looks like this vomity. I don't know, chunky oatmeal grossness. So you kind of have to play with them a little bit to get what you want. So let's go, let's try like two. Maybe that's good. Okay, 
Now there's also these filters that you can put on here. <clears throat> these are, I still think these are kind of too big. Let's go two, and voxel size one. No, let's go, let's leave it at two. So I'm trying to get it, trying to get it to be kind of thin, like a thin sheet of fluid, not super thick. Um, let's say that's good for now. So there's also this, these filters here we can use. So if we use filters, you can sort of blur those things away. So right now there's a Gaussian filter. So this is nothing. This is with the, I guess it's the median filter. And within the median filter, there's some, if you click on it, you've got some iterations you can change to two or three. But it, start, it kind of starts to eat away at the mesh. And you, you notice we're losing the little drops up here. So let's put that back to like one. Let's maybe not try medium, let's try Gaussian. If you, you can click this little add filter thing and it gives you a couple different smoothing operations. So Gaussian is usually pretty good. It's kind of heavy handed though. It kind of smooths away a lot of the stuff. So let's say that that's good for that. Let's go back to our general tab and try to get these to come back. Let's maybe make the point radius three. Yeah, so some of those kind of come back. Let's make the voxel size one and see what that does. Cool. Okay, point radius two. So again, it's it's with particles, it's just a lot of push and pull. You know, you change one thing in one area and makes things other things go away, and then you kind of have to go back. Um, <clears throat> it's not an exact science. It's you kind of just changing numbers and hoping that you get a good result. And eventually you get pretty good at knowing what the numbers do and you have a fairly decent idea of what results you're going to get. So let's try two iterations. That's better. And maybe let me get out of wireframe mode here. And A and C. So we can kind of see this a little better. That's looking better. My splash is, the shape of my splash is pretty ugly right now. But like I said, I don't really want to spend too much time shaping it to be the perfect splash. I just wanted to show you kind of how the process and how to do this. So we can also stack these. So we have Gaussian up there. Let's try turning median back on again, see what that does. Did that even do anything? Not really. So let's try another one of these. Let's do like offset. I like offset because it sort of takes the whole mesh and just makes it thinner. It doesn't really smooth it out so much as, as make it thinner. So this is with an off, it's with it on. <clears throat> so let's try two iterations. Okay, so now we're starting to see the particles beneath it. It's getting thin, it's cool. Let's maybe, it's still kind of rough and, and like dimply. I don't really want that. Let's try three iterations, four iterations, five iterations, something like that. Okay, but we're losing, we're, again, we're losing these guys up here. <clears throat> so let's try and bring them back. Let's go here and maybe make the point radius three. It's a little better, four. Okay, so they're, they're coming back, but now our mesh is kind of thick again, but it's still, it's a little smoother. I think it's better. So there's another trick you can do. <clears throat> um, so that's, the, you know, the OVDB mesher itself gives you these great tools. Oh, uh, before I forget, <clears throat> before I move on, one important thing, I always forget this, so I'm gonna do this right now. In the OVDB mesher, under tags, make sure that you click transfer velocity, because when we bake this, See how these little tags appear? It's gonna give you these little velocity tags. And if you don't have that checked on, you won't have any motion blur on this mesh. So you're gonna want that. Um, cool, so that's all you need to do to get that on there. Great, done. And get away from this point color thing, I hate it. There, just click around until it goes away. That's what I always do. Great. So. What I was saying before is in the filters, you've got all these great blurring effects, but there's other things you can do. You can it, This also responds to Cinema 4D's native deformers. So see that the OVD mesher is inside this generator null, essentially. We can put other things in this null too, like we could put a smooth in there. And right away, you can see that it, it had an effect. It wasn't a huge effect, but I guess if you look at these little spheres up here, just decrease or increase the stiffness, kind of helps a little bit. Um, that's one thing you can do. 
Uh, another thing you can do, so let's decrease it so they get kind of small. Um, another great trick <coughs> is to use a displacer. So um, you could put a noise in your displacer and make it all bumpy, but I, I still want it to be kind of smooth and watery. Um, I, but I want to either uniformly expand the surface of this mesh or erode it. And the way you can do that is by putting a color in there. <clears throat> so white is going to displace your mesh outwards, black is going to displace it inwards, and 50% gray will do nothing. So right now, let's leave it at white, so it's going to push our mesh outwards. Now that's way too big, but if I go into the strength, and maybe instead of making the height 10, I make it like 1. So here it is with no effect, with 0, but if I make it 1, 2, 3, so you can, you can see that I can start to get some of my mesh back. So it's just a, it's just a balancing act, push and pull, so maybe I'll do one centimeter. I can also go into the negative to erode away, like that. So let's say I like one, I think, I, I think one is fine. Something like that. <clears throat> so that's, that's basically all I did. So then once you have that, you can, uh, you can bake all of this stuff by you can either turn this into an alembic if you wanted, so you could right click on the OVDB measure and just go bake as alembic, and that will just turn it into a nice baked alembic for you. Um, but the easiest way to do it would be, I think, to bake everything. <clears throat> would be go to the utilities and then go to XP cache. Then you would just basically pick where you want to save your cache and then hit build cache right here. And then that'll take a few minutes or a few seconds, depending on your computer to kind of run through this. So let's just let's just do that. Um, I'm gonna save this. Oh, I'll just save it to my desktop. I'll make a new folder, call it XP Cache. Oh god. XP Cache. Okay. What? Where's my folder? I just made it. There it is. Okay, hit build cache. Takes a few seconds. Okay, so that took a couple of minutes on my computer, um, but now things should play a little faster there. Yeah, now it's more in real time. You can scroll back and forth, so caching helps. So that's, I'll be honest, that's not the world's greatest crown splash. That's pretty ugly actually, but I wanted this to be a short tutorial just to kind of give you an idea of how I made this and not, like I said, refine it because I could spend an hour, you know, just refining the look of this thing. So cool, let's say that we're happy with that. Um, the way that I textured it is really easy. I <laughs> just clicked make a redshift material, <clears throat> throw it on the mesh, and then I just took the preset and went to water. <laughs> and that makes water. <clears throat> Good enough for me. Great. So. Um, let's talk about how to animate the water droplet and the camera move, because I know some people had asked about that. I, I uh, kind of thought they were maybe simple enough to, to not share it, but I, I'm, I think I should just show you everything, because it's maybe you don't know. So the way I did it was I put a null down right at the center of the scene, which is where my stump is, and then I made a camera, and then I hit PSR to zero it out, and I made it a child of the null. Let's close this stuff. Let's call this cam. Okay, and then let's raise the Y axis of the camera null so that it comes up here. And now we're like inside the water. So with my camera, if I just move it back in the Z, you'll see that we're kind of aligned with the stump. So the reason I put it inside of a null is most of the animation is done with the null. So I can take the heading value and sort of swivel around my stump while still keeping it in the center of the frame. So what I did so was I animated the Y value of the camera like this. <clears throat> so, and then down to 24, right when the explosion happens, I have it end like that. So let's see. Bam. Cool. Okay. And then I also, right when the 
explosion started, I have everything, I have this kind of rotate. So right around, maybe, I think I did it just a few frames before it actually lands, I keyframe my heading, and then <clears throat> go to the end of my scene, and go to like that. So, something like that. Okay, now we gotta refine our curve, so open up the timeline F curve editor here. <clears throat> and under camera, let's click on the Y first. So we're gonna refine the up and down. So I wanted this to <clears throat> uh, be like like it's affecting or like it's following a water droplet that's being affected by gravity. So it's going to start kind of slow and then come in really fast and land hard. So something like this. So it's gonna go slow here and then faster. So it should be like, bam. And I might even make this a little more. Whap! So it really feels like the camera is just smacking down on the ground. It's almost like the movement of the camera is what's driving the explosion of the water. Okay, cool. So bang. And then we'll, let's make the, refine that little turning here. It's kind of happening a little slow. So maybe let's go, maybe let's have this start a little earlier. Something like that feels a little better. You can refine this a little more, but that's basically all I did. I just kind of par I parented my camera to a null. And then if you wanted, you could, you know, you can have the camera, you can animate the, the Z value of the camera. So right at 24 frames, take in the actual camera part, not the null. Keyframe that your Z value, and then have it move backwards just a little, a little bit also so that it kind of reveals more of the scene as you rotate around it. It's basically all I did. Okay, and then for the water droplet, um, let's just kind of move to a spot where I can kind of see some stuff. Let's put a sphere in here. Let's move it up so that it's like right there. And I want to actually parent it to my camera. And then I want to move it forward so it's not right in my face. So it's right there. So that way, when it's parented to the camera, it's actually going to follow the camera. So that's really that's that's I didn't even I didn't even really animate the, the water droplet. It's just a sphere parented to the camera. Now I made the sphere smaller, so let's make it like that. And let's actually change it to an icosahedron, so it's a little bit more evenly distributed polygons. <clears throat> and then I put it into a I put a displacer object on there and change the shading to noise. And I'm pretty sure I just left it at the default noise and just increase the global scale so it's like a little more like that. And then I think I put the animation speed to like two. Let's see if that does anything. Yeah, so you can see how it kind of moves a little bit. A little, little more organic and a little bit less sphere-like. That's cool. Okay, and then I also put it into, or put a uh, taper on there. I think I did it, move it after the displacer. Oop, come on, right there. So the taper makes it more like a water droplet. So it's kind of pointed at one end and you can kind of change the height of this, maybe make the curvature like zero or put a fillet on there. And then you can kind of move up, move the position of this to your heart's content. So that's basically what I did, so that it's like that. <clears throat> and then I guess my camera would have to come all the way all the way down to the stump. Or maybe make my Y value a little bit more so that the because otherwise if, if it just stops here the water droplet doesn't actually impact. So let's see my Y is right here. Here's another little trick. So let's so let's say I've got my camera already, all the keyframes are where I want them, the curves are where I want them, but I want to change a value, but I don't want to mess everything up. If you hit Command or Control D on your keyboard, and you go to Key Interpolation, and then click Overdub, what that does is, because uh, I can, 
go to my camera here, and then I can move this down to there, and then re-keyframe it, and it keeps my curves, so everything stays the same. It doesn't like reset everything to um, the default curves. So cool, looks like it's impacting. And then the last thing I did was right, I think on frame 23 or 24, let's see, on the sphere, I just went into the basic tab, keyframe enabled, and then went one frame more, and then turn it off and disable it. That way it turns off the visibility of it. So it's not, there isn't just like a lingering drop there. So bam, that's all I did. And then basically, it, you know, I timed this, I made it, we talked about this in the last scene, but all those leaves are coming up on frame 24 as well. So everything is frame, is timed to frame 24. So everything drops, bam, and then right on 20, frame 24, everything explodes. And that is, pretty much it. Um, <clears throat> let me know if you guys have any questions. I hope this was helpful. Um, I know it's not like the prettiest explosion, <laughs> but I just wanted to show you kind of how to use the tools a little bit. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments, uh, and hopefully I won't take so long to make the next tutorial. All right, thanks.